How's it feel? How does it feel? Speechless. You're without speech. I'm without speech, mate. I'm ecstatic. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. It feels so good. Like, yeah. it actually feels so good. I said that a thousand times yesterday. It just feels so good. Well, Counter's debut run in Australia was at Newcastle on a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. But that's still not the big smoke. No. Like there would have been racing at Rose Hill or Ramwick. We deal specifically <laughs> in Saturday Metro racing wins. And as we said yesterday, Counter can run on a bit. He can run on a little bit. <laughs> but the second report says she can run on to first pass the winning post. She can. Second at Portsea can take a spot, you know, forward to midfield and, and you know, take a daring run up on the rails. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? Three back the fence? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jumps jumps pretty much with them. Oh, she she did absolutely nothing wrong. Did absolutely nothing wrong. She won. Uh, first up. But, and so, I know I've, I've said this at absolute nauseam yep. uh, to anyone that will listen, but she looked outstanding in the yard and compared to her first day ever run uh, f- for Jack Bruce at Ipswich, chalk and cheese. Oh, yeah. Like she, you were overseas, but she looked pretty good in the yard then. But yesterday she looked cherry ripe. She, she looked, looked ready to go. Which given the interrupted prep mm-hmm. where she's, I reckon she's had three or four cancelled trials or jump outs. It's a hell of a training program. That. It is by Jackie Bruce. Well done, mate. Um, he went bang bang as well. Yeah. So he won with the favourite on the Gold Coast Poly Hereditary. Can't remember what race, like race three or four. Uh, and we we know someone in the ownership group there. And and less than half an hour later, he goes bang, Doombin in a group one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, a class one. Yeah. <laughs> I asked a friend of the podcast, Craig Sneesby. So what's the difference, mate, between a class one victory and a group one victory? <laughs> He's like, oh, to be fair, it's like same thrill. <laughs> yeah. He said, "Look, the the dollars are different, yeah. but the feelings the same." Yeah. Um, and, and another one in the ownership group, friend of the podcast, uh, Ben Pay, said, "Oh, mate, it's better than any drug you can take. <laughs> you can bottle up this feeling." <laughs> and he's right; like, it's just the the immediate. Aftermath of just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so good. Well, mate. let's take you into the last, uh, we'll take you into the last 100 metres. Go, 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 For a class one victory at Doombin. Uh, <sighs> hey, you gotta you gotta take your wins when available. Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, you, you, we've earned that, man. Yeah. Like we've earned that. We've run on a bit. Yeah. So um, what we discussed that was counters what twelfth or thirteenth start, and he's been with us for nine. Mm. So mint condition had two starts. So what's that? Eleven. And then Portsea, that was, Portsea, her third that, start. that was her fourth start with us. Fourth start. So that's her 15 starts. So one from 15 and about 10 placings. Yeah. Yeah, a strike rate for the top three is pretty significant. Yeah, very good. But, you know, that just pays the bills. We, we want to make some money. Yeah. We want to make some cash drifters. And I hope a lot of you followed us in to the yeah. to port. See, I'm not going to lie before the race. I, <laughs> I was saying to anyone, oh, how's she going to go? So, look, I think she'll run well, but she's first up. Yeah. And I think she'll get better as the prep goes on, yeah. which is still the case, but she was good enough to win. Yeah. Um, she looks like a mild type horse to me. I think so. Um, that thing down the outside uh, that nearly pipped her, she's still won by a really strong, long neck. <laughs> the uh, longest neck. But that was the five dollar favorite. If you did see the race, and it was second up, so and it won last start as well. So it looks like that's that's a smart horse. Probably, I reckon that horse could go towards a Doncaster or something. Yeah, definitely going places. The thing that ran on and to just miss for second. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, like, what's the what's the ceiling with her? I said to you immediately after the race, like a class six in Brisbane. <laughs> that makes sense to me. It makes a lot of sense. I said to Jack Bruce, I said Tats Tiara. <laughs> 
And he said, wouldn't that be nice? And then I said, actually, scrap that. Stradbroke handicap into Tats Tiara. <laughs> um, but the good thing is, is she's going to win us some races, mate. Yeah. Like, she's a horse who puts herself into the right spot, you know. And what do they say about mares in form? She's officially a mare now, and she's clearly in form. Clearly. So she's broken the dark. She's got that confidence back up. Yep. yep. And, and, you know, I think it was a soft six track yesterday. So but she might actually appreciate it with a bit of cutout, which... Let's take you to the TJ or something. <laughs> <laughs> take it to the bloody TJ. Um, yeah, nah, so stoked. And yeah, yeah, she she looks fantastic. She's a pretty horse. Um, yeah, she has the socks on. Got the socks. And her temperament, mate. She's chiller. Yeah, it's very very chilled. Where mint condition was a bit of a nutcase. Yeah, you know she appreciated a part, but apparently Heels said that back in the day she used to try and nip his fingers off. But I don't think you get that. See, she's posed for the photo. She was brilliant. She was brilliant. Um, yeah, so we've got the good girl, um, model student, second at Portsea, and then we've got Counter. <laughs> He's an absolute naughty boy. Yeah. I could see him, like, putting a field away by, like, three or four lengths one day. Yeah. Like, and it's like, and he's at like $15. It's like, what the fuck happened there? <laughs> yeah, 100%. But, whereas I think Portsea is more your grinder, I feel. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And she doesn't have a massive turn of foot, but she, like, she didn't go around another horse yesterday. No. Like, sensational ride by D. Thornton. Yeah. My favourite jockey. Yeah. I've said it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <I> was, <laughs> you and I are like, we could just kiss him. <laughs> Get him in here. I could kiss him. Uh, what I thought was a great touch because we clearly haven't been in the, uh, I guess, the winning connections room there at uh, at any racetrack. No. But at Doom and there, they basically take you up where you're overseeing the mounting yard there, basically. And then they just have the race on repeat. <laughs> just constantly. And Benny Pace, <laughs> I saw him 20 minutes after the race, just giving fist bumps to him. Like, <laughs> yes. That's what it's all about. Um, he he texted me some gold yesterday. Let's have a look. See. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Parchi. Okay. Seriously, mate. How <laughs> effing good, A. Eh? A spelled A-I. Four exclamation marks. Fuck. F-A-R-K. Legit walking on air. Six exclamation marks. Sport of kings. And we are kings today, bro. Aren't we just? I it couldn't is the, have said that better myself. Mate, it is the sport of kings and queens. Yeah. Um, May I rest in peace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May she rest in peace. It's definitely it was the sport of queens. She loved it. Yeah. Queen Lizzie. Um, and, mate, we were kings. We were kings for about half an hour yesterday. Yeah. It felt really good. It did. It did. And you know what? Like, that's the minimum that we deserve. We yeah. deserve so much more as well. Yeah. We deserve... We deserve benchmark hundred races oh, listed. I've I have a bone to pick with you later. Oh, do you? Yeah, because I think you you might have um, you might have lured the victim in to a really <laughs> stupid decision yesterday. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking. About. <laughs> Speaking of benchmark hundreds, uh, oh my god, we discussed it on here. <laughs> I know, I know, I just. <laughs> I have the vi- I have the I have the meeting with the victim on the Friday afternoon. And 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 the, look, the victim has a much better look than I do prior prior to um prior to the Wednesday recording of the podcast, and <clears throat> and I don't know what he did, but he just talked me into something, yeah, which was a stupid bet. It was. It was a stupid bet, mate. There was some there was some interesting results yesterday. Very interesting results. Now, I think if we're declaring something as the bet of the autumn, and it runs. Second by a twenty dollar pop. I think we have to discuss that off the top. Oh, As for to. her, we have to, mate. She's she's drifted in um, Oakley Plate markets as well. She's now eight dollars. King's Gambit is three dollars now. Now no, we're toxic. We were talking about him two weeks ago. He was about seven or eight bucks, and that's for me. That's off one oak, like decent trial, but we've seen with Bodyguard you can trial terribly. In. And he's a race day horse, whereas King's Gambit is a fucking nutcase. Don't know which one's going to turn up. And three dollars now, please. toxic, please. And as for her, she looked a little bit flat. Just hit that flat period about thousand uh, hundred meters out, and then you parlay all of this in 
with Imperatriz's trial where she was she looked flat. Geez, I think those early early season sprinting markets in in Melbourne are they're kind of like turned on the head a bit. They're tricky. They're tricky, and this is why futures markets can often be toxic. Yeah, this this is exactly why. Um, well, in secret, spin. Oh. She's she's not going to resume in the lightning stakes because her track work work's been been poor. So, what's happened with the mares, mate? Mm. Hard to say, really hard to say. But as for uh, two dollars fifty that she went up at, that was that at that's that a gift at that price. That's a bet to nothing. Yeah, and it turned out it was. It was. <laughs> it was. And then she jumped it like uh, Ray Magnerio got scratched, so she ended up jumping like. Short, shorter than what she would have been even with the scratching, right? right so like a dollar eighty. Yeah, but it was only seven cent deductions. So yeah. you take two fifty down to two twenty or so. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So a dollar eighty is you're starting to get a little bit toxic there. But I, I still yeah. thought she was I still think gonna put them away comfortably. I was like, Yeah, that's a that's what price she probably should be. Yeah. Am I gonna jump in a dollar eighty? Probably not. No. So and yeah, is she was just and to be fair, she's only been beaten like a length. Like she, I think yeah. it's just like her price has probably been a little bit disappointed, disappointing. Like she was on what was I think a bit of a moderate speed. Like it wasn't. It was about a length and a half according to Racing dot com's figures. Like quicker than standard for the class. So I think she's been in probably higher pressure races and probably absorbed it a little bit better potentially. Uh, Henry Dwyer, the trainer, wants to take her to Royal Ascot, right? So so there's no way that she can be fully wound up. Um, but despite that, I still think she... Uh, I still think she would have been good enough to put that field away. King Stand? Yeah, I think so. I might have to go over there for a little bit of a business <laughs> trip or something. You might have to. Yeah, yeah well, for podcast <clears throat> purposes, definitely. Um, yeah, so disappointing. But like, I, I'd take the eight bucks in the Oakley Plate comfortably. Yeah. Like you reckon? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Let's Eight have, bucks is a nice price for her in that race, mate. Let's have a look here. Oakley plate market. I couldn't believe it because I was like, oh had a quick look this morning. Three dollars thirty King Scambit. That is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Sure. Uh Scraper, now six bucks. Uh so I think he's come in a dollar or two now. As for her, eight bucks, that's a bet, I reckon. It's a decent bet. Yeah. Like I'd have to look back at her second up profile, but I'd suggest it's pretty damn solid. Benedetta, Cylinder had a nice trial, mm. but is he going to there or the Lightning? Not too sure. Uh, yeah, Benedetta at nines. Kalos is now at $11. He was pretty impressive. Like He brained him on the clock, quickest uh, last 200 and 400 of the day. Espiona probably won't be going there. Bellini Patina, I am me, I am unstoppable, had a nice trial. King of Sparta, overpass osmosis. Like the rest of these, I'm not sure if they're going there. Interesting. Shapes not to be a good race, but um, yeah, Sphere is probably still the one for me. Mm. I'd say. Runs just, on the board. Just, and just that price. Yeah. Like Screeper, yeah, he's an up and coming sprinter, but as far as got the runs on the board, like you said, uh, King's Gambit, $3. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. So going back to, I guess, the Lightning. So that's this that's next weekend. So you have Imperatriz at $1.80. After a pretty lackluster trial, but she has bigger fish to fry as well. Like she's not going to put in her best performance during a trial. Private Eye at four fifty. I'm unstoppable at sevens. Bellini Patina at nines. Cylinder at nines. Espiona at nines. Passive aggressive at twelves, and then you're getting twenty six or longer. The rest. Do you know what the bet is out of all those you just mentioned? Passive aggressive. Yeah. She's the bet at twelve bucks, a thousand meters. First up, like yeah, she's been retired and couldn't get in foal, so brought back. Hey, Kementari won again. <laughs> Kementari <laughs> did. Um, but you know, that that could be a gift for a really big spell. You know, get the cobwebs out. Trialed well. Mm. Uh, she's beaten kick, kick over a thousand meters yeah. down the straight. Yeah, I think she could be bet at that price. I uh, the one. I, I'm going to do some research on during the week. Is still remark at thirty one dollars. Mm. That's a big price because if he heads there, I don't think he's going to be that price. No, um, thousand meter specialist first up. 
Yeah. You take your money and you get you out of the take, casino. Take the money and you get the fuck out of the casino. Uh, yes, but um, <clears throat> Imperatriz, flat trials, interesting. Yeah. Uh, could she come out and put this field away by two lengths? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely, she could. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about... I heard this so much on the broadcast after and during the race. Mr. B now. Mr. B, yeah. Mr. B is back. Yeah. Okay. And then Lizzie went with it as well. Sensational win by Mr. B. Now, Mr. B, Mr. Brightside for the uneducated, <laughs> um, it was a good win. It was a great win. Tell you what, mate. Prior to Jenny, she must have... She's just gone to another level with this pressure up front. Mm. She's a really smart mare. Yep. Um, and... I saw some comments where I was on the fence with her. I was like, I kind of want to see her, see her do it again. But now in the, like an all-star mile market, mate, like she's well in, in a race like that now, I would have thought. Yeah, definitely. They've just figured her out. So yeah. if you think about her last prep, she's nearly beaten Amelia's Jewel over a mile. Uh, I think that was a mile at Mooney Valley when we yep. were there on that, on that night before the AFL grand final. And then Flemington week, obviously, well documented what she did there. And and you're right. she She's like, you made a really good point yesterday. She's a bit like the blood. Yeah. Where you're sort of thinking as a, as a leader, you want cheap sectionals. Where in actual fact, now the blood wanted to, yeah. he wanted to break their hearts. And yep. Pride of Jenny is like that. Yep. Um, who beats her in group one mares races? Over 1,500, 1,400, 1,600? Oh, if it's a wave for age. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. That's all within the space of three runs. Mm. It's it's so incredible how this game can change. And look at this into the straight. She's in the worst part of the track because yeah. I couldn't believe how wide they were fanning. Oh, so wide, yeah. So Mr. Brightside is in the absolute bloody acceleration golden star zone of yeah, Mario yeah. Kart. And then she's in the quicksand back on the rail and she still lifts. Now, albeit that's Buffalo River, but Buffalo River with Celine Gaudry in the saddle is a different horse. 1,400 metres. Shout out to Lloyd, Lloydie from the leg up. Don't know if you saw that. He's like, there's worse roughies in this race than Buffalo River. So he was tipping out Buffalo River about 40 to 1, and he's been done by half a length. Yes, that's great tipping. <clears throat> uh, but I, Brightside missed the start, but I still at no point was I overly concerned. For him, like, he's, he's just a he's just a really good horse, isn't he? He's just really good. He can sit anywhere. Five time Group One winner now, yeah. All Star Mile as well. Yeah, two Doncasters. Yeah, it takes a great miler to win two Doncasters yeah. back to back. Um, and good tracks, wet tracks. Lost a Cox Plate by a lip. Like, yeah. is it fair? Is he still underrated? I don't know. Is he the best horse in Australia now? Could be. I, I think who's he, better than him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Who's better than him? Imperatriz? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I, I think I think you can say Imperatriz because, you know, we say it all the time on the podcast. Our, the quality of our sprint, sprint group ones is undisputedly, you know, you, you, you can't argue that they're deep fields every single time, right? Yeah. And she's putting them, put them away. But Mr. Brightside, like... Like, he lost to a lip to a Romantic Warrior and then Romantic Warrior won again another group one in December mm. in, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Romantic Warrior is one of the best horses in the world. Full stop. So, yeah, you're right. He just... He's just got <laughs> guts. He's just got guts. He's versatile. Um, You know what you're going to get with him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to New Heights this prep. That's such a good win. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, <clears throat> look, in retrospect, he won at like a dollar ninety, right? He won by a lip. So you, you're looking at that price now and you're thinking, was he really a dollar ninety shot? But he won, so I guess so. Yeah. Like the CF4 has a graveyard of favourites too. Yeah. Like there's usually a bit of a funky result. A lot of leaders win it. Yep. Yep. Um, so I think it just showed, and as you said, he missed the jump by about a length. So it's like, you add that on if he jumps on equal turns, which he usually does. Yep. Like 
you know, I think he's in clearly in for a good good prep. He's just an absolute iron horse. He's an iron horse. Like six runs of prep. Yeah. Battle hard of gelding. Just get, gets the job done, doesn't he? You just love it, don't you? And he's he is completely transformed the Lindsay Park stable. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like this what, second or third generation of Lindsay Park? Yep. Like third gen. Like crazy. <coughs> um out of that race as well, Pericles was probably the biggest disappointment for mine. Um but I I'm gonna have a look. Has he raced much on his Melbourne leg? I wouldn't have thought he No, oh, yeah. Well he, he hasn't. Well, the Vic- he went because uh, they went towards a uh, Victoria Derby with him, so he would have, right. and then figured out that he's not a he's not a stayer. So a, at this shorter distance, is probably not. Yeah, maybe at a mile once, and he <coughs> and he was back in the field too. Yeah, I, I think he's a horse who probably needed to be sitting just behind the leaders. Oh, that he we kind of saw that from him, uh, and that was that was my one knock on him. It's like I want to see him against the big boys instead of his own age. Yep. And he didn't tick that box, but in a handicap where he's going to be down in the weights in a Doncaster if he heads that way, still he's, I think he's still in the game there. 100%. And and I think I made the point as well on the potty that he's a four-year-old gelding. And I just think <coughs> I think geldings at that age need to be brilliant to, to win and wait for age. Um, that's where a lot of them, to your point, win the really good handicap races with a lighter weight and then as they get into their racing a bit more that's when they can start to um they can start to match it with the big boys Mr. Brightside and Thunderstruck both great examples so I think Pericles is on that path yeah <laughs> like um, he's, I'm looking at his sectionals here it's nothing special like he's matching it pretty much like Brightside had uh, a better like last 600 home obviously but it's pretty much on par with those so um V8 Thought he was pretty good running into fourth. Yeah. Um, what I didn't understand was the massive push for him. Like he got jammed into, I think he was sub five bucks at one point in some markets. I don't know what price he jumped at, but six bucks. Six bucks. Yeah. Okay. So bright side a dollar ninety five. Prior to Jenny nine bucks, so she would have had support again, but the owner would have assisted that. <laughs> the old Craig Sneesby yeah. effect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pericles was the one six fifty. He started. Did he? Okay. Well, he was around seven fifty in during the week, so that's still support. When Brightside, he was over two bucks, so he got he got into about dollar eighty uh, right before the race. And then he's obviously gone out really late uh, to a dollar ninety, dollar ninety five. So, um, but V eight for mine, like against his own age, mate. Against his own age, yeah. I I, I don't think he's He's no jack and to, to the point that we made. Yeah. During the week. So the Australian Guineas is probably that market that we want to have a look at. Just connecting these dots as we do, right? <laughs> so King Colorado at four bucks. Now we saw him run a flashing race first up in the winks, like in the spring, and then he kind of just fell away. But he ultimately ran in the Cox Plate. Have to be a pretty good three year old to ridden upside down as well. Yeah. Like he basically said that after everyone else. Uh, V8, so he's at four bucks. V8 at fives. Riff Rocket at sevens. Snow Patrol, who was a smart winner yesterday. Yeah. There was a lot of close results yesterday. There's a lot of roughies that got up yesterday. I don't know if there's like more bees in the air, but there was a lot of bees dicks. Yeah. The <laughs> there was a lot. There was a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, look, Mr. Brightside, I assume two weeks into the futurity. And then another two weeks into the All Star Mile, you can just go bang, bang, bang. Well, the Futurity is it just going to be the exact same field? I'd imagine so. Yeah, maybe a couple more resuming who have deeper targets. Yeah, this we've said it to at nauseum. It's a stupid race. It's a stupid race. It's a, no, it's stupid. Well, not stupid race. It's stupid scheduling. It is, yeah. That's what it is. It is. Um, let's get on to the two-year-olds, eh? Now, yeah. bodyguard. Uh, this is one of the best performances of a two-year-old this year, I would say. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at right this Right up replay. there. Because uh, my... <sighs> he's just got something about him, this horse. And he's still getting $6 in the Oakley Plate, uh, in the uh, Blue Diamond, rather, for him now. 
Interesting. So that's him. Forgive the internet. Uh, that's him. What three or four wide? And this is thousand. Uh, about to tick over to the eight hundred. So he's there for. I would say he's without cover for about four to five hundred meters. There, he's got the back of stay focused now. But Mark Zara just had him relaxed, mm. ready to go. And look at him, mate. He's just a race day horse. He knuckles down. He knuckles down. Uh, big, strong colt, classic yep. two-year-old. Um, Spenny. Yeah, Spenny. Out of I'm Invincible. Like, he just he just ticks a lot of boxes, right? Like, he's he just knuckles down there and... The way he hit the front there reminded me a lot of Animo. Switched off immediately. Mm. Do you know did that yesterday as well, Mr. Brightside? Uh, Prod Jenny was past him, uh, past the post. Yeah. So it, it takes a good horse to know where the, the finish line is. And, yep. and yeah, you're right. Uh, bodyguard did that yesterday. High octane fans, I wouldn't drop off. This was a sneaky good run. Yeah. Look at him back on nowhere to go. And I think. Uh, was it Blake Sheen on? I think Blake Sheen was on. Uh, he's basically like, all right, let's just get him running through the line really nicely. He, he changed lanes. He was on the fence and then look at him through the post here. Yep. Really, really good. Yep. I was I was on high octane. I um not not with a lot of confidence, like because of because of your bodyguards and because of because of your um stay, stay focus. Um and so initially watching it, yeah, you're right. I was like, Oh geez, he's just died, hasn't he? But then yeah, I watched the replay and and no, it was a good run. So yeah. if you if you like him in the blue diamond, I wouldn't be too disheartened. But I, but I still think that there's other there's others I prefer like Bodyguard and yeah. Coleman and yeah. uh, Lady of Camelot, the the Waterhouse bot Sydney horse. Tell you what, if Stay Focus gets a better run there, he, uh, it's probably closer, and it's only half length in it as well. Yeah. So Stay Focus was a really good run too. We've had some <coughs> we've had some shit blue diamonds recently. I don't think this one, this one's not going to be. This uh, is this is a great crop of two year olds, yeah, mate. Yeah. Um, and we'll get onto it later, but fully lit as well. Yeah. So, all right, Coleman and Lady Camelot at four forty. Bodyguard at six dollars is the bet for me. Uh, high octane at sevens, and these are at eights. Stay focused at nines. Fully lit at elevens. Any one of them could win. Yep. It's really deep, and haven't even talked about the filly Hayasugi. Keep no. Eleven dollars again. She just keeps winning. Yeah, she keeps winning. She's probably the most experienced out of all of them yeah. as well. I think that was her what fifth start on the weekend. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, and she, this these connections, man. Oh, that'd be absolutely stoked. So she's getting, she's nearly cleared about four hundred k in uh, oh, prize bang. money already. And uh, yeah, so she just she just knows how to win. Yeah. Bold Bastille. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I think maybe just the interrupted preparation might be an excuse there. She she was like two bucks, so that's toxic. The market was really keen. <clears throat> I, I I thought before this race that she was a you know a top five two year old based on her to to perform like she did so early in the two year old season. I was like, gee whiz, she's a smart horse, but maybe the rest have just caught up to her. Yeah, but you, you can't you can't back her with confidence after that. Yeah. Yeah, and see it so often. I reckon a couple of years ago, I reckon Similion won the sat that English race at uh, at Mooney Valley. Yep. And um, see the hem horse, another horse very similar, and now he's racing around like benchmark seventy eight. So it's like, especially with that really early one, it's like I kind of take it with a pinch of salt. But in saying that, hey, Asugi ran second in that race. Yep. And Bob Bastille beat her by three lengths, and then this horse has gone on to win two or three races since. Yep. So, all right. Of the two, like, Ayasugi's in the absolute fast lane here. I think this horse back on the fence is not a bad shout. And I think that was one of our one of our listeners actually did say that. That is Kuro Yanagi. So, that horse, back on the inside. I would bonus any horse that was back on the inside. Fence uh, was off. Fence was off. Some of those, some of those races, they'll come so bloody wide, mm. crazy. Uh, so I reckon she's probably the one that you want to take out of the race. Uh, in terms of times, they were very similar. Were they? Like point okay. zero two in okay. overall times. So I think the horses I'm taking out of it in order 
it's probably four from the <clears throat> pre, uh, those. What were they? Preludes or previews? <laughs> yeah, the, literally is the preludes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd take bodyguard number one. Yep. Stay focused. Probably the Philly back on the inside, Kuri Yanagi. And then high octane. I'm not dropping off him, but I can't have them all. Coleman no. was so good. Queen Coleman of the was, ball. Coleman was uh, Queen so of Camelot. Uh, Lady of Camelot. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, look, that's the thing. You could back any single one of those on the day and it's just, you've, you've got to pick one. It, that, that's how it's going to be for me. I, I've probably got... Um, Bodyguard and Coleman is the two that I'm probably tossing up between because I just think on the day, a good Colt will take care of a yeah. good Philly. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, there was a Carline Club, Carline Cup rather, and for <laughs> some unbeknown reason to me, I looked at the Victorian victims' tips and Young Werder was on top. <laughs> and I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, Look... Declan Jones, explain yourself during the week. Um, was was Team Yonsei, and I think my logic was pretty sound on the podcast as well. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, she had a massive layoff. First up, you just put a line through that. Second up, I think she did enough. You know, third up here, she's I think she's ready to win. <laughs> and then I had a meeting with the victim on Friday afternoon, and just got taken by Young Word his last prep. <clears throat> for some reason unbeknownst to me and I think I justified it by, by saying to myself well, last prep who's on a you know a Melbourne Cup path this prep he's not going to be on that um, so maybe he's going to have a bit more sprint in his legs and I just got sucked into young Werder well the victim did um, and I got sucked in by, by what he was saying and obviously Yonsi was was really strong up front and kicked away from him so yeah. that's that's another winner down the drain idiot yeah. Why, why did I back Young Word up? Don't know, mate. Toxic. So like, toxic. Like, you look at his you look at his career, I don't think he's ever won a listed race, Young Word. <laughs> so he's, he's, he has won a benchmark 100, though. He's that's a, his grave. That's his, that's his gravy. If, that was, if they changed the title for that race yesterday, then he would have won it. <laughs> like, that was a group three, mate. I know. Idiot. Yeah, so Yonce, Yonce. Good to see her back. Yeah, and one thing that I like seeing... In the uh, form. So I think she lost by about four lengths first up. She brought that down to about a length and a half second up. And then she won by a length yesterday. Yep. So she, and she was heading towards that mile too. So I love seeing that in uh, the form guide. And she proved us right. So, oh, one of us. Um, <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday version of Declan. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we've talked about Bodyguard. I think that's about... Oh, did you want to say anything about Estriella in the last? Oh, she was just a smart winner. Yeah. She was one of the wins of the day for me. She was sweating up massively. Massively. Oh, after the race. Oh. Look how white they are here. Blake, Sh- Blake Shin's a good jockey, mate. He knew, he knew where the fast lanes were. The cream rose to the top yesterday. I think Zara had two. Jamie Carr had two. Shin had two. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was on uh, Brazen Song. Is that her name? Uh, Brazen Style, maybe. I thought I was a winner, two hundred from home. I was like at twenty to one. Oh bang! But no, nah, she just faded into third. Um, but yeah, smart win that. Smart win, Estriella and and Kieran Ma after the race, like he's not one to talk up a lot of his horses, no. but he was like, no, nah, she's a special horse. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll follow her then. Um, is she and I am invincible? She looks like it. Let's have a look. With that big behind. Um, yeah. Let's have a look. She is a... Drum roll, please. I'm invincible. There you go. So she's she'll be a sprinting horse. I don't know what you know what they'll aim her towards, but knowing Kieran Ma, bloody probably seventh run of the prep, uh, the group one sanks her down. <laughs> Down in Adelaide. That, that has her written. Yeah, has her written all over it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let's head to Sydney. So, some good two year old races there, obviously. Let's start with the long row plate. Switzerland form has been franked with Canasta. So, that was that was a nice win, that. That was good. That was good, yeah. Um, in those silks as well. You don't see a lot of two year olds in those silks. No. Um, so, 
Yeah, the fierce impact silks. But uh, the bubble burst on my guy, Kingdom Under Siege. Is that what his yeah, name was? Yeah, but he was a big price. Yeah, he was. So he, he was, was a big Mick price. Well, he was 20 bucks into 13 so there was market support there, Shit. as there typically is for the China Horse Club. But yep. Embassy would have thought he just was off and gone. And then look at this thing, just sprout wings. Bang. So, yeah, over the 1,000 metres, you know, sport you wanted to see but switzerland looks like a good call well there'll be two in the cool more silks um you know come the slipper i reckon the connections we're listening it's like storm boy that is going like he's not in cool more silks yet mm. they were listening they were listening they were listening um but let's go to the millennium because there's a bit to unpack here but fully lit Good win. Good win. Great win. Uh, gate 16 or 17. Um, 15 even. 15 even. Looking him out wide. And probably helps that basically every single horse on the inside missed the start. <laughs> yeah, that definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> helps. But look, you're... Look at him. He's three or four wide there still. Yeah. He was a great win. But the thing is, like, he drew, he drew a wide gate, right? But you're looking at the stable that he's, that he's trained out of. And you're like, well, I at least know that, yeah, he might be three wide, but he's gonna be he's gonna be in the first third. Yep. And for these two year olds, it just gives them a much better chance. Yep. Or for any race horse for that matter. Two I think there was two Waterhouse bot ru- runners in the race. <coughs> first and third in the running. Yep. It's just statistically so good. Oh it, and, and they have and you look at their strike rate as a stable. Yeah. It's it's better than every other big stable. Yep. Because of that reason. Yeah. Like you'd much rather your horse. Like if he get re- if he got run over with fifty meters to go, you're like okay, fine. Yeah, and it's better than, you know, the, I think it's Ragdoll maybe, running third there. And I was thinking this yesterday, right? With say a horse that can run on a bit like Counter, <laughs> if he comes up here and they train him towards being like that, you know, on on speed type of galloper, first third. Yeah, and then he he does get run down. Is is that? I think that's better than him running on for like second or third. A hundred percent, it is, mate. Because you, because there's there's statistically, like you said, there's going to be so many more opportunities for him to to nab a race. You're taking all the bad luck out of the equation. Exactly. Like that horse still had bad luck, fully lit, three wide, no cover the trip, and it was still good enough. Exactly. Still good enough. So he he for me, there's no reason why he can't run top five in a slipper. No reason at all. I, there's no reason for me to believe that Waterhouse Bot won't have all five in there. <coughs> Mate. Like they've, they've got an unbelievable stable of two-year-olds. Um, I think uh, I was talking to a friend of the podcast, Brad Weston, <coughs> and, and Brad Weston was talking to uh, his dad, Darren Crawford, about this particular crop of two-year-olds and said, is this the best you've seen in your lifetime? And Darren said, look, in your lifetime it would be, but Tommy Smith had like – like four or five years in a row where he just cleaned up the slipper and he just had these unbelievable crops of two-year-olds. So, But for him to be saying that, still, as a man who's been probably following horse racing for, what, 40 years? Yeah. It's a really good crop. Yeah. <coughs> Not rag doll, rag queen. That was the eye catcher. Like, yep. huge, huge. So, out of D'Argento. Fascinating. So, he'd be a, what, th- third or fourth year sire? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. For those who can't remember D'Argento going around, he was uh, he was run, running against Winks in a Cox Plate. Uh, Star Thoroughbred Silks? Yeah. Yeah. Big grey? Yep. Good to see. Really good to see. Uh, but yeah, fully lit. And then Rue de Royale. Um, I reckon that's what Craig Sneeze people might have been on. Um, ran well into second as well. Zesty Man, who we made a claim for. Uh, fifth, just... Too far back, too far, uh, too wide. So, um, it was a it was a character building day for the source yesterday. Actually, um, yeah, hey, zero winners. Hey, <coughs> listen, when you're picking things at sixty bucks <laughs> when the source is in the last, you've got excuses. But also, I didn't think it was championship day one on the weekend. Nah, was it? Nah, was it Golden Slipper Day? Was it? Hang on, a premiership's one in February. <laughs> so you know. You can set up your season, especially if you have a Saturday Metro winner. Look, every... (laughs) 
every strong, every robust house is built on a strong foundation, okay? Yeah. But, you know, there's still time. Uh, what I want to... The Eskimo Prince needs some attention because we mentioned this during the week. Bjorn Baker, is he potentially the new Joe Pride 2.0 with these tried and true sprinters? Look, this this Kabbalist, like, used to be with Chris Waller, right? Now he's with Bjorn. Those Derby racing silks are on fire at the moment, Aren't by they? the way. <clears throat> um, and you know what? Like, with no disrespect to Chris Waller, he's so successful and the reason, and, you know, he's successful for a reason because he's a genius, but because of that success, he's got an enormous stable. Weight of numbers. Weight of numbers, right? But, but if, I, if I had a horse with some promise like a ballus, three-year-old colt, and I'm in a stable where there's the two best cults, Militarise and Shinzo, for their age group. I'm thinking to myself, does he, you know, and if I'm up against Coolmore and up against the China Horse Club, is my horse really going to get the attention, the attention it, needs. it needs and deserves? Yeah. That was a smart win. That's a, that's a good, it takes a good horse to win that race. Mate, this horse was flopping in maidens mm. last prep. And look at it. It's now, that's a group two or group three win group three the Eskimo Prince Mate, Paul Ailey won that race yeah so it takes it takes a good horse to win it yeah now pretty sure Wild Rulers won that race yeah yes yep now Macarena she I wasn't expecting her to be second last <laughs> mid Kitty Cat Tom and Kitty Cat Tom I think he was around five or six bucks what that did was, we say that was dumb if you're going into Kitty Cat Tom in this race stupid but look at him Getting through his gears, perfect Rose Hill guineas. Like I don't, I don't know why he kicked off in that race though. He needs racing though. Yeah, he'll, true. He'll, he will be like, he'll be like fourth or fifth up. Fourth or fifth up. Like it will be. It's the perfect starting point for him. I could see Kitty Cat Tom going around in a Queen Elizabeth post Rose Hill guineas win. Yeah, like he's, you know, is he is he our best weight for age horse? No, but it's but yeah. give him that experience. Hey. Give him that experience, then wind him up for a Cox play as a four year old. Yeah. Absolutely. I would agree with that. Griff was the one who was the big failure. So I haven't seen anything. I haven't read the uh, stewards reports, but uh, invi- who's that back on the inside? Is that, which that let, let that uh, celestial legend. Good looking horse. Yeah, it was a, it was a good run too. Um, but out of the race, Macarena was probably one of the ones that you want to take out of it. Um, but you know, that's 1200 meters. I think her ceiling is probably about, 1400 and should be heading towards the flight stakes, I'd imagine. Yeah, and Cabal is a sprinter, like 100%. Whereas, yeah, Celestial Legends, Tommy, Kitty Cat Tom, um, even Griff and the likes of, like, they're, they're heading towards the, the Guineas. Like Ramwick and Rose Hill Guineas. Mm. Yeah. And I reckon, I thought she wrote. So next week, we have the Lightning Stakes. So, Imperatriz time. Mm. It'll be interesting. It will be interesting. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I firmly believe that she's the best horse in the country, right? So, in base of her body of work, particularly in the spring, like yeah, you're not getting the price, but I can't, I'd, I'd rather have her on top than some of the others, you know. Like yeah. you're 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 watching those trials, and if you're like, oh, I'm going to get her beat based on what I saw in those trials. It's like, yeah, if it pulls off, you look, you look smart, but, but, but there's, there's, there's overwhelming evidence on this side to suggest that she's so much better. If, if you're going to do it, it'd be first up. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, like similar to as for, uh, with Kalos. Yeah. St- shout out to, uh, David Straylaw from, uh, Sultan. Uh, Sultan. From uh, the two units podcast, who tipped Kalos firmly on top. Yep, great, well found. Nearly twenty bucks, mate. Unreal punting. Um, but like I said, up, you know, so someone who I know is going to enjoy the straight is a thousand meter horse who I know is going to be up on pace. Who's been trialing well. Twelve bucks, passive aggressive. I reckon that's the play if you're looking for some value. Yeah. I don't know if she'll start twelve. Do you reckon she'd come in oh. sevens or eights, maybe? I'd want to see double figures for her. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, that's what I mean. Twelve dollars is a bet. She hasn't. She hasn't run a race in nearly twelve months. Mm. Like that's that's oh no. She actually had a 
Adelaide prep, didn't she? Yep. So I'd um yeah, but still that's a long time off. It is a long time off. So I'd want to in a group one pressure. That's I'd I yeah I won't be taking that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'd much prefer the remark at thirty one dollars. Yeah, remark. He could run a big race. Yeah. There's no reason why he couldn't. I'd prefer it if it was set weights penalties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think so. Not a way for age for a yeah. remark, but you know, stranger things have happened. Um but yeah, f- back to the graveyard of Flemington, so just be wary of that as well. So we'll be monitoring what the wind is doing. And if it's coming from a certain direction, I've saved a few tweets to just basically <laughs> just remind yourself. Remind myself about that. And if then the circle races, you just basically whoever's on the fence leading. Um, but it was a good day's racing. Oh, f- phenomenal. Even better day watching the racing. Oh, phenomenal. At great. Specifically Doombin. Lifetime highlight. Um, it just felt so good, man. It did. It felt so good, man. Um, so, yeah, Port C, she's in for a good prep. Um, she's knocked off the wind, so, you know, anything from here is a bonus. Yeah. This prep. I reckon what we might do is put together on Wednesday because there's uh, some differing opinions in here, I feel. Top five horses in Australia right now. Yeah, cool. Because I think your team, Imperatriz, I think I'm team Brightside. I've got nothing. I'm, I'm, I was an, an earlier adopter of Brightside compared to most. I've got nothing against the horse. I oh, just, yeah, you you are very much an early adopter. But Imperatriz, <laughs> mate, just that, she just underscored it by that last win in down the straight where she just had nothing go her way and put put a good field away. Yeah. She's very, very good. Very good. Mm. Okay. All right. Huru. See you.